What's up, everybody? Hope you're doing well on this fine Monday afternoon for me. Who knows what time it is for you? But we're gonna be getting into the different wordplay modes available in our app right now as of July 11th. We'll probably be adding more here in the future, but I'm gonna do a quick overview of what each of these modes does and what it's best for, and then also give you an example of how you can create basically a whole cluster of different articles and pages on your website so you start ranking on Google. So let's go ahead and hop into the app here. So if we back up a little bit and we're looking at which mode do we want to use to create long form content with AI, it all is kind of dependent on what you already have and also how much work you wanna put forth before hitting the AI with a content generation request. So first off, we have keyword mode. This is best if you have a list of keywords and you don't really wanna do the extra work to write out all the article uh, exact titles. So if you have a list of keywords, you can plop them in here. For each keyword that you write here, you separate them by a line break. And for each one of these keywords, Wordplay would go ahead and write an entire article about each one of these keywords. So if this is basically the best, if you wanna do essentially no work at all, you just have a list of keywords from Ahrefs or wherever you are doing your keyword research and you want basically you know, a lot of content fast for a broad variety of topics. That's where you'd wanna use keyword mode. Now for outline mode, this is a little bit better if you wanna be more directive to the AI about what you're creating content about. So for example, if you already have a very specific article title, uh, and then all the different sections within that article already prepared. This is a great way to like include certain keywords if you know that they're going to be needed to be included uh, to rank on Google. Then boom, outline mode is gonna be your best friend. You can write up to uh, 12 subheadings on this mode and it gives a little bit more information to the AI about exactly like what intent you're going for when you're writing the article. So let's go back. That's outline mode. Next is title mode. This is exactly the same as keyword mode, except you're gonna be using exact article titles. For each title here, um, this is going to create a new long form piece of content for each individual title. So this would create three articles right here. Now last is bulk CSV mode. This is exactly the same as outline mode. I'll give you a quick example. If we download this CSV content template, you can see we have our article title here and then you can write up to 12 sub subheadings to the left. So for each line here, it's going to create an individual article. So this is for experts who already have a lot of stuff prepared and they wanna be very directive to the AI in what in terms of what they're writing about. If you're a little more loose on what exactly you want the AI to write, you can use one of these title mode or keyword mode, but outline is better for kind of the SEO expert who already knows what they wanna write about. Now, let me give you kind of an example of the best way to use wordplay for this type of stuff. I'm sure a lot of you have heard of topic clusters, and if you haven't, this will be a, a nice little SEO lesson for you. So one of the best ways to rank on Google is if you have a pillar piece of content, and generally a pillar piece of content is something that is a little harder to rank for. That means there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of content already out there about the subject, uh, but you want to be the authoritative person. You wanna be ranking at the top of Google for that. Then you're going to wanna to create a pillar piece of content, and I'll show you an example of this in a second. And then around that piece of content, you're going to want to create a lot of tangential topics. So for example, let's look at podia.com. They have a blog post that's called how to create, sell, and profit from an online course in 2022. Now this is their pillar piece of content. They're essentially trying to rank for how to sell an online course or how to create an online course, stuff, terms like that. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, you can actually see that they have a ton of different um, tangential pieces, which are all just the topic cluster pieces. So this is their, this page is their pillar piece of content. And then all of these other pages here are their cluster content. So if we open up a few of them, who should create an online course and what are the benefits? how to come up with ideas for the online course. So this is stuff that gets less search volume, but when you have a lot of content about a specific subject, Google starts to recognize you as the authoritative person or website talking about whatever you're talking about. All right, I was editing this video and there was something important I wanna show you. So if we look at the URL here too, you can see this is clearly cluster content because we still have that main how to create sell profit, uh, online course, that's like the main piece of content, that's the pillar piece of content, and then you can see benefits, ideation, planning, stuff like that. It's actually baked into the URL. You don't always have to do that, but that is an interesting way to ensure that everything links back to this main piece of content, the main piece of content that's probably going to give you like the best ROI on each click, and then also like it probably has the best search intent. And if we hop back into this image, you can see that all of these are linking back and forth. The cluster content links to the pillar content, the pillar content links back to the cluster content, but you'll see that the cluster content does not link to each other. So this is kind of showing Google 
Um, like if you think about Google crawling each of one of these pages, they'll see if they randomly, if Google's crawler randomly lands on this page, it's going to link them to this. Um, this page is going to link to all these other ones for them to rank. But also if pretty much anywhere, if Google lands on any of these cluster content pieces, it's going to direct them back to that main pillar piece. So essentially giving internal linking back to the most important part of this entire topic cluster. Now you can do topic clusters on a ton of different topics within whatever niche you're in. And so if you think about when you're creating content on wordplay, it doesn't always have to be the stuff that's super high volume. In fact, I kind of think wordplay is going to be not as good of a tool if you're trying to compete for a really, really competitive term. It might be good for drafting up like the first version, but you're definitely going to have to do a little bit of extra work in order to rank at the top of Google search results for like a super competitive term. Because if you look at, like, if you're looking up a super competitive term, you're going to see every p every page on there is handwritten a lot of work has gone into it and so you can't expect to just write an ai content article and rank number one you have to look at it in terms of clusters but when you look at these cluster content this is kind of the best way to use wordplay in my opinion i mean there's a million different ways i'm sure you guys already have a bunch of ideas if we look in our support inbox there's about a billion different ideas of how people are using wordplay it's actually pretty interesting um but generally, like if you're writing content and trying to rank for like super low, low search volume terms or creating cluster content around like your main pillar piece of content this is going to be really, really helpful for you.